So I just wanted to show you how, um, if the jump rings aren't in the right place, how it will affect your weave. And you should notice it straight away and how to fix it, really. So I've gone to add this next link, and I can feel that it's not right. It's not looking right. So I've looked at it, and if you can see, this little jump ring here is the wrong size. So it should be in the middle of the two jump rings here. But it isn't. It's to the sides. What I need to do is just... So what I need to do is to remove the jump ring that I was using to secure it. Come back in and just very holding it all nice and steady. Just relax it a little bit. I need to just replace that jump ring to the right side. Then when I come in with my 3mm, I can instantly see and feel the difference. So I've done this section here and I've done nine links. Now you'll see that my ninth link I haven't actually added my gemstone just yet. You'll also notice that around here I've prepared 19 sets of links ready for the main section. So there are 19 of my little groups of an open jump ring with two attached and then there are 19 individual uh, jump rings open ready to go now all of these jump rings are five mil so we're going to be using the same size for the next section the reason i haven't completed this section just yet is because we have to do it slightly different to go on to the different variation of the weave so i'm taking a three mil jump ring and i'm actually going to take two i just liked having almost like a marker so I'll just again take the main piece and show you exactly what I mean so if you see here I've got the main piece here and hopefully you'll be able to see that I've gone from single links to separate out my sort of sections to a double link just here so basically there are two three mil jump rings there and what that does is it almost sections it for me so that I can see this then becomes, sorry, it's it's got too much going on in the background, um, but this then becomes the sort of consistent captured weave, captured bead weave, should I say. And if I rotate it around here, hopefully you'll then see there's that double jump ring marker, and then it opens back out into the sort of separated sections. So that's just my choice. I just like that look and I found it it helped me to separate it so I'm going to go ahead now take my last section so there's nine here I don't know if I said that but there's nine this is my ninth I'm adding in my gemstone taking my three mil jump ring exactly the same nothing's changed and closing but what I'm going to do now is add at my second three mil jump ring again just in the exact same place as the previous one and close and now we have this ready to go so this weave is exactly the same but the difference is that we're not going to be adding a jump ring in the middle to separate them so I'm going to go ahead and pick up one of my sections that have been pre-made with two jump rings attached feed that through both of my three mil going to move that slightly to the side there we go it was focusing on the jump rings so you can see there that we've got that jump ring close that up then take one of my open jump rings I'm not going to keep saying the size because they are all five mil feed that on so this part is exactly the same the only variance is that we've got two 3 mil jump rings here. So opening this out. Opening this out exactly the same way. So holding that nice and steady. Dropping those jump rings. Opening out those top two and popping it in. Picking up one of my sections. I'm now going to come straight in. So the difference now, whereas before I added a 3 mil just to bring that together I'm bringing straight away one of my sections so one jump ring with two attached 
and I'm just going to scoop and catch these outer rings. Now, the exact same has happened again here. These two jump rings here, have, the ones that I've just scooped up, have got to be either side of these here. So I'm going to just very gently undo this. Reposition these so they are the right side of the jump rings. So just holding that all nice and steady. Just pulling that with my using my pliers just to move and reposition that jump ring. You can see they're now sitting in the right position. I can come in with my new jump ring, let that go, and it's in the right place. Close this jump ring up, take another of my pre-opened single ones, and I'm going to feed this through. So this one is going to go through the same place the section we just added has, okay, and then straight back through those two jump rings. So closing that and you're going to have that okay so that's ready for the next jump ring so the technique is exactly the same but we don't add that little free mill to break it up so pop that jump ring in make sure that when you bring these two Jump rings up. Oops, that happens. Wasn't holding it right. These go to the side. This opens out. Pop in your jump ring. Bring these two up. And I can see that they're right. This is why I like this particular pair of pliers. Um, then add on your section jump ring connect that, close that up and then add in your single one. And as I said if you have, if you can take the time to prep all of these before you start, once you start doing the weave it does just suddenly build really quickly because you don't have to keep opening and closing jump rings, it's already laid out for you and also it means you don't have to keep counting to see if you've got the right amount because you can prep all of that when you're actually getting ready for the um, design. I'm going to do one more just to show you again. So just finding a way that you can hold this comfortably I find is the best way to make it work. Because obviously these jump ring, this little section is loose until you secure it. So I just personally find holding it like this and using my fingers to rest the jump rings work for me. Just feed that in and then pushing that all the way up. take that section and close and add your single jump ring and bring that all together and you just continue on like that I've gone ahead and filled the whole of this section up with the gemstone so there are 19 links here so I had nine links here with the free mill jump ring separating them and then I've got 19 continuous links in this section then I'm going to go back and do another nine sectioned links on this side to obviously mirror here and I'm just going to show you quickly how I switch it back from this weave to the linked weave. So I've already prepped all my sections um, and what I've done is I've got nine of my jump ring with two attached ready. I've got nine of my five mil jump rings open and ready to go and then I've got ten of my three mil jump rings because if you remember we need to double up before we go into the singles and then I've got one four mil jump ring open and that is to help us blend into the two and two which we'll do once we've completed this section. 
gone ahead and added in my gemstone for my final link in the continuous section then I'm going to go and pick up my three, three mil and just bring that together I'll move these because it's trying to focus on those so we have that and I'm going to close I'm then going to pick up my next three mil and feed that through that section as well and close so that section has now been finished off with two three mil jump rings I'm then able to pick up one of my loaded sections pop that through both of those three mils and close Take one of my single five mils, pop that through both of those three mils, and catch those other two jump rings as well. And then I just repeat the same process that I did here. Here, again, just for clarity, open them out, pop in your gemstone. When you do it like this, you see I folded them up with my, my fingers. It almost felt them click, so I know that they're in the right position. Remembering to come in with my 3mm jump ring. There. Close. I only want one. I don't need two. I only ever put the two in at the beginning and end of this section here. Picking up my loaded section, so add on my jump ring. 